Hello, thank you for joining us today. Today, um, we're talking about running a science lab in your classroom. I've had a lot of teachers ask me, how do you manage a science lab? Or they want to improve their science lab because they haven't gotten it just right yet. So today I am going to share how I run my science lab, plus some tips on other ways that you can run it. Okay, so well, there I am. Um, before we get started, don't miss a thing. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video. And on all social media, you can find me at, at Aloha Monday Teaching. All right, so let's get started. So what is a science lab and how do I manage it effectively? This is based on this blog post and it'll go live next week. So there's different steps. So here's my process. I plan, prepare, set up, and then the day of conducting the lab. So that's what goes on with the students. So the first three are the behind the scenes, and they're really important. So behind the scenes. So when you plan and prepare your lab um, for planning, make sure that you are using your standards and the resources that you have available. So just start with your district resources and then move on from there, your supplemental resources, and then things that you create on your own. Once you ha have all of that planned out, then go ahead and start preparing. Prepare the PowerPoint. I highly recommend that you have something showing on a screen while your students are working so they can refer to that, that visual reminder. Um, so I would prepare a PowerPoint, um, lab sheets, or maybe you just have them write in their notebooks or you have some kind of lab report that they complete, and then your materials. So you'll want to gather all of your materials. Um, then decide, the planning process also includes deciding how you're going to grade the lab. We'll talk about that. And also just having a plan for when students are not following a rule or rules, what kind of consequences you are going to give. And then you'll determine how you're going to set up your lab. I'll give you a couple of ideas for that. All right, so planning. Um, so use your standards, whether it's NGSS or your own state standards, and then relate the lab to your learning goal or your, or your objective. So obviously it should support what you're teaching your students. Um, it could even be something in the explore stage in a 5E unit where you are almost introducing something to them where they're gonna be like, okay, this is cool or what you know they'll try to make sense of it but then you're going to come back to it later during explain and, and explain that lab even more and then it all will connect with what you're teaching them um, so you'll use your resources you start with your adopted resources and then use any supplemental resources okay and then preparing once you have that planned out uh, your visual reminders your powerpoint that you'll click through put on certain screens during certain parts of the lab on lab day. Uh, use a student lab sheet or a notebook. I, I provide a lab sheet for my students. Um, decide if it's going to be a teacher-directed lab or a student-led lab. So what I mean by that is the teacher-directed lab is one that's already set up for them. Like it has the procedure, it has um, the materials, all of those things, like everything's set up. The student-led lab is what our standards are wanting us to go towards more. So this is, you don't have to do it every single time you do a lab, but once in a while, incorporate these. So this is where you're guiding the student to create the lab, to create the investigation. So that's what I mean by student-led lab. And I'll give some ideas about that. Grading and your materials. So for grading, there's a couple of ways that you can grade labs. I got the sun right in my face there. <laughs> um, so for grading, I've done both of these. You can use a rubric, which you just grade every lab against a rubric. You might want to include things like um, the hypothesis, their data, their analysis, those kinds of things. And, um, or you can grade each section on the lab sheet or the lab report for points. And that's what I currently do now. Like I will grade their hypothesis. I do three points. They need to have their if then because. Um, 
for their data, it's at least four, sometimes more depending on what lab it is. And I look for their sketches, their explanations, their observations, that sort of thing. I grade their analysis, their conclusion. I grade those, they have to write complete sentences, so they get points for that also. All right, for materials, so some ideas. This is what I do in my classroom. I gather my materials and I stick them in tubs. I like to use these um, tubs from Ikea, the Trofast tubs. You can see these are three different um, lab activities we did for Newton's Laws of Motion. And uh, so this is what I'll do. I'll just gather everything. I put it in one area, that way I I have it all set out. And one more thing I want to mention when you're in the preparing stage, I highly suggest that you do the lab yourself before the kids do, because you wanna work out any kinks in it, um, or you wanna make sure it works. There was a lab once my teammate and I, we were, we we're like, oh, this looks really cool. Let's, you know, let's do this with the kids. And we had everything ready. And then the day before the lab, we did it. We did the lab ourselves and it was a complete flop. So we're like, okay, sorry, kids, we're not doing a lab. Um, so you want to make sure that you do the lab yourself. And that way, if it's not working for one group, you know why, uh, that kind of thing. Okay. So now setting up the lab, here are some different <laughs> the sun is bothering me in my face. Okay, so <laughs> setting up your lab. Um, so some ideas that you can do, and I do this both ways depending on the lab. Um, I You can set it up for your students at the lab stations, have all of the materials set up all over. I have nine lab stations, so I would have everything already set up. So the kids just come in, and when it's time to go to the lab station, they've got everything there. Or you can have all of your materials in your designated area. So what that looks like for me is I have a big lab table in the front of the classroom and um, I have everything set up. I do it kind of like a cafeteria line. So what they'll do, they'll come up and they'll get a tray and they make a line and then they get a tray and then they have to put the amounts of materials they need on, on the tray. And then they go to their lab station. So some tips I have is to save you some time is have your first class set the lab up for you. So have your materials out in that designated area and that very first class will get the materials and then they're gonna leave it at the lab stations for the next class for the rest of the day. And it's already set up. Um, just they would have to probably bring back materials that need replenishing for the next class. So that's, um, that's a tip I would do. And then have your very last class of the day bring everything back to the designated area as a complete cleanup. Okay, I want to block this sun. I'm gonna take myself off of the screen because the sun on my face is, it's bothering me for some reason. So I'm gonna go off screen. There we go. Okay, I'm still here, but. <laughs> um, all right, so also when it comes to preparing your lab, make sure that you are clear with your students about lab safety. So before, obviously before you do a lab, you've already taught lab safety, um, but you wanna review it before each lab and then have a consequence. So when you're setting your classroom expectations, make sure you teach, practice, reinforce, and review those expectations. And um, I've linked some uh, video about this. Oh, and some possible consequences could be, um, so what you could do is have a consequence um, where say like you go over the lab safety rules and that is their warning. You're like, kids, this is the warning. And then you, they get an immediate consequence or you can just tell them the rules. And then if you catch someone, then give them a warning. And then if they do it again, then you give them the consequence. So that's entirely up to you. It works either way. And a consequence, you could just have them sit out and do a reflection sheet. You could have them sit out for the rest of the lab and they have to complete it at their desk or do an alternative um, activity. You could have them do a demo with you instead where they don't get to do the lab, but they are still learning from it. Um, you could just chat with them in the hallway. Those kinds of things work really well. All right, so now it is lab day. 
Okay, I closed my blinds. Um, so now it's lab day. So let's what we're going to do with this is organize it through the scientific method. And that way you can kind of see what goes on inside the classroom. So the kids walk in and they're at their desks at this point for the first part for the question and hypothesis. So all they've been given by right now is their lab sheet or they have their notebook out, however you are having them write this out. And in a teacher directed lab, so the question is provided to the students that gives them, it guides them to what their hypothesis will be. So they have an understanding of what this lab is going to be like. Uh, so they, that question is already there. For a student led lab, students are going to come up with the questions. So the way that they will come up with their questions is when you are going over the materials that they're going to be using and the parameters that you're giving them and also any phenomena that you have used that will lead them to this lab. So they're going, or maybe they've already come up with questions ahead of time. That's where those questions are coming up from a student-led lab. For their hypothesis, uh, this is written after, for a teacher-directed lab, we write this after the procedure so the kids have an idea of what's happening and that way they can write a proper hypothesis because their hypothesis includes the experiment, the if part. So they're gonna write, if I do this, then this is gonna happen because in their reasoning. So that's when I have them write that and then we share. For the student-led lab, they're gonna base it on their questions and the materials and parameters that you've given them. And that way they, they write their hypothesis. And it might be a good idea to write a group hypothesis and that way their experiment is based on one hypothesis or the group can write, each person can write their own and they choose one to use the experiment um, on. Um, during a lab, I also, I have group roles and I usually have four students at a lab, sometimes three. So if there's only three, then they have to share the fourth role. I don't like to have more than four students doing a lab together. So I make sure that students know that they have a job and everyone does something and they have to take turns. Those are my expectations. So student one is going to gather the materials. This is just an example. They're gonna gather the materials. Student two will begin setting up the lab. Student three will do the next step in the procedure. Then student four does the next step. And then they just take turns as they go through the lab. All right, so now, um, so they've written their hypothesis and they're ready to start. So before I send my students off to the lab stations, I review the rest of my PowerPoint with them because I want them to know what to expect, especially the cleanup. I will have the procedure slide up while they're working. And as they start to get towards the end of the procedure, I'm gonna put the cleanup slide up and that way they know what to do when they're done because some groups, they finish at different times. So that's a tip. That, that's what I do in my classroom for the visual representation. Um, all right, so procedures and collecting data. In a teacher-directed lab, so students will follow the procedure that you've given them. They'll follow each step, and as they work, they're going to collect data in a space that is on their lab sheet or that they've set aside in their notebook. In a student-led lab, they are going to write out the procedure. So this takes a little longer, and they need to be very clear on each step and then they have to follow their steps to conduct their lab. They'll also determine what kind of data they're going to collect, and then they'll collect their data just like you would in a teacher-directed lab. And finally, to complete the lab, once they've worked through the procedure and gathered all of their data, they're going to analyze their data to answer the questions in the conclusion. So in a teacher-directed lab, those questions are usually already there, but in a student-led lab, um, you might provide some questions just so they have something to use. And you can also have them write a conclusion after they analyze their data. This would be a time you would include any graphs that students can make based on their data, depending on the lab. And all students are responsible for cleaning their lab stations. All right, so like I said earlier, some groups will finish before others. So what I have kids do, so they're when they're working on the lab and if they finish, I have them clean up. Um, they usually write their, they like to write their um, conclusions at the lab stations together. Some will go back to their seats and do it. 
But once they're completely done, and I might have other groups working, I have some ideas for you for those early finishers. Besides working on other classwork from other classes, you could, so what I do, what I've done, and I'm going to try some new things this school year, um, vocabulary practice for the unit. They can do crosswords or word search puzzles that are related to your unit. You can have a choice board, menus, or stations of activities ready to go that they can do when they're done. And I asked some other middle school teachers in a Facebook group that I'm a part of, and some suggestions were to read books in a science classroom library, like a science free time, and they just explore and also phenomena exploration. So things that they're interested in, have them learn about those, those things. All right, so it is your turn. What are your favorite labs that you do with your students and how do you manage your labs or do you have any new ideas? So I would like to hear reply in the comments and let me know. Before you leave, um, in the description, I've got some links. So I put a link for your free guide, which is five daily must-do routines to run your science classroom like a pro. And you just go to fleurstrongoli.com slash daily to get it. And that way you can um, have these five routines you should do every day. If it's a lab day, stations day, teaching day, whatever day, This is these are five things that you should do just so your classroom runs more smoothly. And also in the links, I've got uh, some lab safety things, um, labs down there linked. So check it out. And then I'll have that video about expectations. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will talk to you soon. Aloha.